Carbocations are often formed as intermediates in multi-step chemical reactions. Remember in an energy diagram in a chemical reaction that's multi-step, the intermediates are these substances that are formed in between reactants and products. When a carbocation intermediate is formed, sometimes it undergoes rearrangement, which means that it is literally rearranging or reorganizing the atoms in the carbocation to form a more stable carbocation. Let's start by reminding ourselves the order of stability of the different types of carbocations. The methyl carbo carbocation with no alkyl groups is the least stable, and then as we add alkyl groups, carbon chains, to the positively charged carbon, the carbocation increases in stability. So what we're drawing here, the four different possible types of carbocations in order of increasing stability with this being the most stable. And let's also do a refresher on the names that we give for these carbocations, methyl, primary, secondary, and tertiary. So if a chemical reaction produces a tertiary carbocation intermediate, because that is the most stable type of carbocation, it is not going to attempt to undergo any sort of rearrangement. But if we produce a methyl primary or secondary, because that is not the maximum stability, those carbocations will attempt to rearrange themselves to form something that is higher in stability. So if we form a secondary carbocation, it is going to attempt to turn itself into a tertiary carbocation. It might not be able to do it, but if it can, it definitely will. If we form a primary carbocation, it will attempt to turn itself into a tertiary, or if it can't, it'll go ahead and and turn itself into a secondary, secondary. And if we have a methyl carbocation, it wants to turn itself really into anything, ideally tertiary, if it can't do that, secondary, if it can't do that, primary. So let's talk a little bit about how this rearrangement occurs. Here's two examples of carbocations, and let's start by characterizing the carbocation, methyl, um, primary, secondary, or tertiary. To characterize the carbocation, we find the positively charged carbon, and we ask ourselves how many carbon-carbon bonds are associated with that particular carbon. This carbon has only one carbon-carbon bond, so that means it's replicating the structure of a primary carbocation. There are two hydrogens on this positively charged carbon. This is a primary carbocation. Because it's a primary carbocation, it wants to attempt to rearrange itself to form, ideally to form a tertiary carbocation, but secondary would be good as well. This rearrangement most likely occurs by moving a hydrogen atom from one portion of the molecule to the positively charged carbon. It's also possible to accomplish rearrangement by moving a methyl group or even a larger alkyl group, but it's typically a hydrogen that we move. So um, in this case, what we do, we're going to make a list of steps here. We have to find the positively charged carbon. We have to find, just kind of notate, all the carbon atoms that are attached to our positively charged carbon. So let's go ahead and start with that. We've already found our positively charged carbon and all of the carbon atoms that are attached to it. When things get rearranged, they can only move between these two carbon atoms. So even though we have a lot of other carbon atoms in the molecule, any kind of rearrangement can only take place between these two carbon atoms that are directly attached to each other. And then once we have found those carbon atoms, we are going to look for, first, our goal is to look for hydrogen or um, secondary, a methyl group or any alkyl group, so alkyl or R group, to move to the positively charged carbon.
And it sounds like a lot, but it, it's really quite simple once we start practicing it. So we found our positively charged carbon. We found all of the carbon atoms that were attached to it. We should take a minute to think about what is actually attached to this carbon. It has one, two, three visible bonds, which means that there is a hydrogen on this guy. And the easiest rearrangement is the movement of a hydrogen atom. So what we're always looking for initially is, does this guy have a hydrogen atom that we can actually move onto that positively charged carbon? Uh, and it does have a hydrogen atom. So let's go ahead and move it. We can draw curved arrows for this movement where this, um, what we're actually moving when we do this shift, we're moving the hydrogen and we're also moving both of the bonding electrons. So we can draw a curved arrow starting at the bonding electrons, moving over to the positively charged carbon. And when we do that, we haven't made a change to the carbon skeleton. We now have three hydrogens on this carbon out here. And the carbon that we took the hydrogen from, that carbon has become a carbocation. So it is now positively charged because it did lose one of its bonds. This that we have formed is a carbocation that has one, two, three carbons attached to it. So it is a tertiary carbocation, which is good. That means that we have taken a relatively unstable carbocation and rearranged it to form a very stable carbocation. So this process occurs spontaneously, naturally, it just happens all by itself. This particular type of rearrangement, because it is moving a hydrogen, this is called a hydride shift. The hydrogen is shifting from one atom to the other. Hydride is the H minus ion, so it's not H plus, it's H minus. And this is an H minus that's being shifted because it's not just hydrogen, it's hydrogen with bonding electrons as well that are being moved. So let's just keep practicing this because um, you just have to practice it a few times to get the hang of it. So let's work on this second example right here. First thing that we want to do is characterize the carbocation because again, if it's starting as a tertiary carbocation, it will not undergo any rearrangement at all. So here's our carbon. How many carbon-carbon bonds do we have on this C positive? There is one carbon-carbon bond, there is two carbon-carbon bonds. That matches up with this structure right here. So that means that this is a secondary carbocation and it will only undergo rearrangement if it becomes tertiary. So we're never going to see a situation where a secondary carbocation rearranges into a different secondary or downgrades to a primary or a methyl. It's only going to bother to do rearrangement if it can upgrade to a more stable carbocation. So since it is a secondary, our goal is to see if we can figure out how to turn this into a tertiary. We have found our positively charged carbon. And our next step is to find all of the carbons attached to it. So we have one carbon here and we have one carbon here. And remember that these two are the only carbon atoms in this molecule that can shift stuff over to the positively charged carbon. So these other carbon atoms out here, they are too far away. We cannot transfer anything from any of these carbon atoms onto the C plus. We could only take from these guys. So now what we wanna do is ask ourselves, what do we have on these carbons and is there anything that we can move? The carbon on the left has two hydrogens and the carbon on the right has one hydrogen. And again, that's the easiest thing to move. So molecules usually attempt to rearrange by shifting a hydrogen first. So we have a couple choices here. We could shift one of the hydrogens on the left over, or we could shift one of the hydrogens on the right over. Now, if you're really following along and like paying a lot of attention, you might immediately see exactly what you need to do. But let's just pretend that this is still kind of fuzzy to you and you're not sure which one to shift. And in that case, just try both of them and just kind of take a look at what you get. So let's start by taking a look at shifting one from the left side. If we were to do that, let's just shift one of these guys over and draw the carbocation that we would get from that shift. So we now have only one hydrogen over there. Uh, we still have the one hydrogen on the carbon on the right-hand side. 
and our carbon with the C plus, that did have one hydrogen on it already, so now it has two. It's no longer positively charged. The positive charge has moved over to the left-hand side. Notice that always these two atoms are trading. They're trading the positive charge for something. So that's always the case. Like you, if you've seen that pattern, just want to make it clear that that's always going to be how it works. So what did we make here? We made this guy, this one, which is a, it's got one, two bonds to carbon. So this is also a secondary carbocation. And remember I told you, it's not, it's not gonna do that. A molecule is not gonna bother undergoing rearrangement if it does not get something out of it. It's not going to do it if it can't increase stability. So that that's not an option. Let's erase that curved arrow because that is not going to take place. Let's try shifting from the other side. So let's take this hydrogen and shift it over to the positively charged carbon and let's see what that gives us. We have not done anything to the left hand carbon. We now have two hydrogens on the center and then over on the right, we've lost one of the hydrogens. So we have a positive charge there. Again, we are trading the positive charge for the hydrogen between those two carbons. And what did we make here? This has one, two, three bonds to a carbon. So this is a tertiary carbon also accomplished by a hydride shift. And so this right here would be the product of the rearrangement of this particular carbocation.